So recent years has seen a huge increase in popularity of direct-to-consumer online golf clubs. And no longer are these clubs dodgy. Some of them are absolutely amazing and the clubs that I'm testing today could be some of the very best. Hey everybody, Peter Finch here and welcome down to a beautiful Reddish Vale. Spring is beginning to spring and today I'm going to be testing out these. Now these are sub-70 golf clubs. Now as mentioned, it's an online shop. So you go on, you stick in your details, the specs of the club you want, they price them up and then they ship them out. Now today I am testing mostly the 649 MB Tour. I've also got some wedges and a fairway wood. But these clubs with a Project X shaft, two degrees flat, these came in at $749, four iron to pitching wedge. Now in the premium blade category, that represents some really good value. And I'm excited to see what these are gonna be like on the course, but also getting back to the studio and testing out the numbers. If you are new here, guys, please don't be shy. Hit the subscribe button, it's free to do, and wallop that like button with unbridled enthusiasm, especially if you like the look of these flashy, flashy clubs. And also, if you like the look at this, by the way. So this is the six hole at Reddish Vale. Just look at that view, man. Ah, oh, summer is on the way. Just a nice little uh, 232 yard par three to start here, although it is playing downwind and it's like 215. So I've got the four iron. Now, if you were gonna get these particular clubs and not have the upcharge of the shafts or anything special, it'd be 649 and then you get shipping on top. I know the specs of the clubs. So I contacted Sub70, they spec these up and sent them through. And I have to say that the look of these clubs behind the ball, if you were of a nervous, disposition these might not be the ones for you but sub 70 do actually a surprising number of clubs i've never hit any of their stuff before it's gonna be interesting to find out right pin is at the back just taking dead aim oh my god that's come out so hot sit down a little bit long and a little bit left sound on that it's really nice and I'm really excited to test these clubs because I think they represent a bit of a shift in the way that people are buying golf clubs. Is this going to become more and more prevalent or are those main manufacturers still going to dominate? That is a question that we're going to be asking. Maybe not answering, but certainly posing. I sub-70 don't seem to be making too much of a song and dance about these wedges, but they feel great. Like The few shots that I've hit with them already and definitely shouldn't be getting too carried away, but every single club feels really good. Apart from the three wood. <laughs> Let's tap it in for a par. Let's tap it in for a par. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the Tor Only Pro 3 wood, which actually doesn't have a loft on it. I think it's 14 degrees. I think it's slightly less than your standard three wood loft. And it actually looks quite bulbous behind the ball. I'd like a really shallow three wood. This looks like the type of three wood, which would be really, really good off the tee and not so much off the fairway. It does say Tor use only though. So maybe, maybe, <laughs> It's hoping for a better standard of play. So just down the left centre, let's give this a ride. Got a 6.5 extra stiff in this as well. Feels quite long, this. That felt amazing. It's gone off to the right, but no dramas over there. There's a couple of different versions you can get at the 649. You can get a raw version as well. I think this is the normal forged stainless of scent. Oh, I don't know if I'm disappointed or not about that. Mind a raw one. Uh, not a great lie here, so I'm just gonna hit an eight iron down. Hopefully myself a eight or a wedge in. Yeah, that was a disgusting lie. It's okay. Probably my four iron in. <laughs> all right, 130. I left myself a perfect yard again. Spitting all over myself. I'm gonna hit a wedge just to the right of the pin, spin it back left, tap it in for a birdie. Quite warm now. So just a pitch in my gear. Well, that's really, uh, really quite rubbish. <laughs> what a beautiful divot though. I mean, look at that. that. As far as divots go, that is absolutely textbook. Look at the thickness, the uniform. <sighs> Perfectly back in its place there as well. It's like I've, like I've never been here. The only evidence you'll have is this video. So far, loving the feeling of these. Well, let's head back into the studio, get some data on the clubs. And also, while we're at it, I'll throw up a uh, little reel that we just did, testing out the wedges. They're growing on me, shall we say. <laughs> Oh, strike. 
So let's have a little bit of a closer look at these irons. So I'll throw up a little loft comparison between these and my Mizuno MP20s. And the 649s are slightly weaker lofted. Now, if you are looking at a blade, distance control, flight, trajectory, these are the things that you need to be bothered about. Explosive distance and really low lofts, that's not something you should concern yourself with. You know, these are a precision club, not a distance club, apart from a precision around distance. So this is an eight iron here. I'm hitting into the fifth hole at Castle Stewart. <laughs> now behind the ball, these clubs look really nice. Oh, oh, that's a, that's a healer. Um, let's be pleasant and say it was a misjudged strike. This isn't about performance. You know, this is very much a personal preference when I'm looking down on this iron. I know it's going to be good. It's like having a really good burger but you've already eaten beforehand. It's like eating a box of popcorn after you've already smashed the pick and mix at the cinema. It's good, you like it, but you know, you're not desperate. Go. Now, Sub-70 say that these irons have been designed in conjunction with tour players, with some very, very good golfers. They've got the screw in the back of the head to redistribute some weight. It's a forged iron. And for this particular model from Forte Pitching Wedge, we are talking $749. Now, if you were to get my iron, so the Mizuno MP20s, in the same specs, you'd be looking at $1,500. So we're talking half the price. Now, if you were then to offer me that burger and say, okay, you can have the same thing, but it's gonna cost half the money, all of a sudden my mouth is watering. And there's no doubt, they feel great. They do feel good. By the way, on the Sub-70 website, there are 13 different choices of irons. Some a little bit cheaper, some a little bit more expensive, but they're all around the same price. Ugh. Now, it's very hard to get yourself a recommendation when you're buying off a website. And I think that's one of the main strengths that the more established club manufacturers actually have. You know, they have in-store presence, you can go in, you can test them out and get yourself properly custom fit. So in my opinion, you would have to factor in a little bit of extra cost if you wanted to get yourself fit beforehand. So four iron here, pretty much where the pin is, right hand side of the fairway. A little bit toey, but still decent. Still decent, very good. So I've got 180 here, I've got my Mizuno 7 iron, so I use the MP20s. This particular one is in the MMC, and I use the more bladed version from 8 to Pitching Wedge. Now during the studio testing, am I saying that these sub-70 irons are as good as I think the Mizunos are? Probably not. I, the sound and the feel off the sub-70s is amazing, but it feels soft. It feels like you're caressing a ball down to the hole, and it is lovely, there's no doubt about it. With the Mizunos when I strike them, I feel there's a little bit more of a flight there's a little bit more penetration there's a little bit more attack at the actual target so whereas the sub 70s feel a little bit more floaty and gentle the mizunos feel a little bit more aggressive a little bit more mean and as you can probably tell i'm such an aggressive and mean kind of guy that i just identify with them so much more <laughs> 186 century the green little fade oh it's not really faded but the sound and the feel and the strike. I, I just really like my Mizunos. I just really like them. So this 58 degree sub 70 wedge, I love the look of it, certainly from a shelf appeal standpoint. And when it's behind the ball and the blade is squared up, as I open it up, not sure. It doesn't look quite as inviting, but I'm using at the moment Vokey SM8. And I think from a look and grind perspective, they're amazing. These sub 70 is obviously cheaper and <laughs> Listen, they've been doing a job so far. When I'm holding pitches with them, they can't be that bad. But let's see what it's like just opening up. Quite a long bunker shot here. And see if I can just get this gliding through the sand underneath the ball. <laughs> no. 
Uh, nah, just let's have another go. I, I'm not, I'm just not 100% sure about that as it goes in. Probably more of a, a confidence thing and a mental thing more than anything. Look at the, the size of that. Come on, let's get it gliding. Yeah, it just, it feels like it's going to take like a lot of sand. I'm not sure it's quite as adaptable as I probably want, but again, for the price, let's not complain. Still a terrible bunker shot. <laughs> I'll get it right. So this Sub-70 Pro fairway wood, when this is behind the ball, it looks like a really mini driver. There's nothing on top of the club, which I actually quite like, but for a fairway wood, I want, I want a bit of shallowness. You know, I want to feel that I can pick it up off the ground a little bit easier. I don't want it to go into the bunker either, come on. Now the pro version is at 14 degrees and the face actually sits a couple of degrees open at address. But on the course on that shot, I've been losing them slightly left actually. Just trying to get a tight cut. <laughs> well, I mean, I cut it. Look on the positives. It just looks like it'd be a really powerful golf club. I've got the even float riptide shaft at 6.5 and 70 grams. And I think if I really did try and squeeze one. Yeah. I could get it really, really firing. I mean, that's, that's not gonna run out to about 275. I mean, that's good, obviously for distance. Ball speed at 155, backspin at 2000. So these are really good numbers for a driver. <laughs> Chase you a par five here. Let's try and start this over the water and cut it back in, shall we? Just feels like, uh, that's all right, to be fair. I'll go for rolling. Ball speed 164. <laughs> that's pretty impressive, really. So this shot, I want to hit a high draw here. Can I get this launching? This is the, the shot that I think I'm going to have a problem with. <sighs> because it's not sitting very shallow, Feels like I've really got to try and help the ball into the air. Come on then. That was pretty decent. Nice kick. Roll round to the pin. Tap it in for an eagle. Well, kind of. It feels very strong. This feels very powerful. If you're looking for a powerful three wood, this could be the one for you. 169 quid. Couple of weights in the bottom of the sole, at the front and at the back just to redistribute weight. It looks nice and simple from the top, but for a three wood off the deck, I'm not sure. Yeah, that fairway wood, it almost feels like a really good weapon to have off the tee shots. Open face, tight pin. Got to get this airborne floating up there. Oh, stop it. Stop it, go in. Oh! <laughs> Eagle, eagle, oh, whatever eagles make. <laughs> the best lobby in the world, I think. Uh, it's, it's amazing how quickly uh, a shot can uh, change your opinion. Uh, Kieran, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go get that. I'll let you go, go get that. Go, go get that. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Now, during the round with this JB Forge Black Wedge, I've got the 58 and the 54. I've almost been... I don't know, almost trying to find reasons not to like them, but I've hit some really good shots. I managed to hold two pitch shots. I mean, come on. But I do think that really my main issue still remains that they just don't feel that adaptable. They feel that on chip shots and pitch shots with a nice squared up blade, they look great. They feel so soft as well. Hello, I'm going to finish up with Holding three pitch shots today. So this is a 50 yard shot with the Vice Pro Plus ball. Just trying to generate a bit of height and spin. So what's that spinning at? So that's spinning at 8,000 revs of backspin. Now that is very, very comparable to my Vokey SMAs. Now these are $109. For a forged wedge at $109 that feel as good as these, that's pretty impressive. That's a little bit off the toe, still felt pretty decent though. Woof. 
So my main criticism from being on the course is just as you start to open that club face up, it just doesn't look as inviting as some of the other models that I've tried recently. Potentially that's just about sole grind, even though it does look like it has quite a lot of relief at the toe and the heel. So it could be more of a visual thing. Oh, spin on that one. Holy moly. Rip that. Yeah, 8,300 revs. I think we found a little sweet spinny spot on here. A little slightly open. Oh, <laughs> that is going to be spinning. Oh, stop it. That must be 85,000, that. 8,581 revs of spin. Wow, I'm even calling my spin shots now. So both the 58 and 54 wedges, you know what? I really like with a nice straight face. Slightly open is okay as well. Obviously being murdered out, love the look of that. If you're the type of player that doesn't have too much adaption, like you're massively open and you want to play all these fancy shots around the green, to be honest, like for about $50 less from some of the really well-known brands in their forged wedges. This is fantastic value. This is sneakily maybe one of my favorite clubs of the day. Hundred and fifty yards left in. Let's try and get a couple of eagles in a row this par five. A little low drawer with the eight iron here. Let's see if I can shape it in there a touch more. It's very inviting, pin being left. Ah, just left it. Left it outright. That's a very, very safe shot. That's not the type of attitude to get two eagles in a row there, Kieran. That's, I'm sorry, everybody watching. That's very disappointing. The other game again, very, very strong. Allow me to demonstrate placing this back in. So it's down. It's getting the correct angle. Oh, is that? No, maybe not. There we, oh, there we go. There we go. To give it that tap down and look at this. It's like I was never there. So that's been a really interesting day testing for me. I've not hit sub 70 clubs before and overall very, very impressed, especially when you have that price point comparison. I mean, those irons, for example, half the price of my Mizunos and to get that quality of feel, that quality of flight and that general quality of golf club, that's really good, really good. Wedges I enjoyed, the fairway wood, not so much. I think that's more just to do with it. Not really my type of club. Didn't like the look of it too much behind the ball. And I will actually continue to test these moving forwards. The only thing I would have liked to test a little bit more today are some of the wedges, but I actually don't have another 58 degree wedge from a main manufacturer. But on the shorter shots and on the golf course, I actually felt that the sub 70 wedge was spinning probably as much as my Vokey 60 degree. So that's something to bear in mind and something also for me to test a little bit more going forwards. But guys, get down into those comments below and let me know your experience from online golf club providers. Have you bought from any before? What was your experience? And what do you think about the quality of the clubs? If not, would you be interested in me doing a few more of these videos? I've already done Haywood, for example, and I've got a few more at home that I do need to test out. But until that point, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on my other social media platforms, hit that like button with unbridled enthusiasm, and we will see you down here next time. It's a good day testing that, it's a good day.